According to Deborah Tannen, a linguistics professor at Georgetown University, a gender lift is a term suggesting that masculine and feminine styles of discourse are best viewed as two distinct cultural dialects. This may be a little bit confusing, but let's consider this definition in the context of two friends, one from England and one from America. The two friends were brought up in entirely different cultures, meaning they speak in different ways and the norms for what to talk about are completely different. These differences can often lead to communication difficulties such as misunderstandings and misinterpretations. Now think about both the male and the female genders as different cultures. The male culture communicates entirely different from the female culture, causing males and females to often run into the same communication complications as the two friends in the scenarios previously mentioned. The key concept of gender lex theory is connection versus status. The theorists suggest that women use communication to make connections, maintain relationships, and to stay in touch. However, the theorists suggest that men communicate to maintain their independence, status, and to stay centered on themselves. Another key concept of gender lex theory is rapport versus rapport. Women use rapport talk, which is talk that establishes connections with others. Women use rapport for three different reasons to create and maintain relationships, to involve others in conversations and respond to their ideas, and to show sensitivity to others and to relationships. Men use report talk, which is talk that commands attention, conveys information, and wins arguments. Men use report for three reasons. To assert their ideas, opinions, or identity, to solve problems or develop a strategy, or to attract attention to themselves. As we previously mentioned, this theorist views the male gender and the female gender as different cultures. These different cultures create what the theorist calls speech communities. A speech community is a group of people that share goals, communication strategies, and the way they interpret communication. You will now see two real-life examples of the different cultures that we have mentioned, the male culture and the female culture. These conversations were not scripted and we did not suggest topics of communication before recording them. While you're watching, be sure to look for some of the differences that we've mentioned between the ways that these two cultures communicate. You'll be looking for differences in rapport talk versus report talk, as well as differences between their respective speech communities. You've been to work yeah. with great. Like, so you like, know like the main lift that takes you to the very top, mm -hmm. and how they have like that run where all the moguls are at? So the one that takes you to the very top, is that where you can walk off up to the peak? Yeah. Yeah. So we, like, we went up that one, and the backside was all closed. And uh, we didn't want to go like on the easier runs, yeah. So we decided to go down like, like take the line that has the uh, lift on it. It was yeah. so sketchy. There was rocks everywhere, <laughs> and like, the snow was awful. But it was it was pretty good. One of my friends fell once, but he has a rock helmet, like one of those crazy ones, like with the mouth guard. Have you ever seen that? Full face. Yeah, it's like a full face. You kind of look like a stormtrooper. Yeah, they're pretty intense. No, I haven't actually seen that. I want to try to buy one. They expensive? Yeah. They're like, oh, I mean, they're $300. That's expensive. Um, yeah, but they come with goggles, too. So, I mean, if you oh, figure, like, a pair of goggles, yeah, the goggles are really good. And they, like, they fit perfectly, like, in your mask or, like, in your helmet. Mm -hmm. So, like, you're just, like, your full face is completely covered. Cool. So you don't, like, eat it and bite your tongue or break your teeth. Yeah. But I don't know. They go on sale in the summer. For a lot cheaper? Yeah. I think they go, like, 50% off. So it's, like, 150 for goggles and a helmet. Mm -hmm. Which is super good deal because helmets are pretty expensive. But yeah, well, Erica got one for fifty bucks at the ski shop. We had to rent oh, bindings because we got everything for a board, but the bindings we had to go rent bindings. She got one for fifty bucks. It's super nice. Nice. I mean, it's just a Smith. They were, they were going. It was a ski barn in uh, Durango, and they were going out of business, or out of the snowboarding business. They were leaving, so they were just going to do skiing. So they're just selling off. I don't know why the helmets were down there, but they were just selling off all most of their snowboard oh. stuff. That's strange. I wonder why. Yeah, I feel like snowboarding is a growing. Yeah, market. it's growing. It's growing a lot. And I was talking to the guy down there, and he said when they made that decision, there was eight boarding shops that were all like uh, running snowboard gear. And he said that uh, since then, about four or five of them got out of business. Wow, that's strange. So I wonder if like Durango just attracts more skiers. I think it does. They're just... a little. They got their noses up a little bit. Yeah. About. But there's a lot of borders there, so. Mm -hmm. They have good snow too, so. Yeah, I can't wait for the, the good snow, which is why I was glad. So Erica and I went twice because the snow wasn't great, but it was good enough to learn in. So mm -hmm. hopefully when it's better, she'll already be up. Yeah. Ready to and go. She'll get the leaf all the way down. Yeah, well, she's going to practice toe leafing. She just did the heel leaf and then hopefully learn to connect it. That's the hardest part. Though. Yeah. 
just the little the, the turn, like when your back's facing. Mine's yeah. I always had trouble with that. I'd always get. I'd start on my toe side, and then I'd go down. I'd switch to heel side, and I'd come back, and then I'd just lay myself out again, and then I'd flip over, <laughs> yeah. stand on my toes, go back down. I think, yeah, I pretty much had the same problem. I would lay myself down a lot too. Yeah. Toe, like going from toe to yeah. What is it? Heel to toe. That's the scary side. Yeah, yeah. The side where your back's facing. Yeah, and you want to switch down. to front. Mm -hmm. But now it's kind of strange because now that I'm a little bit better, I feel more comfortable, like, with my heels. Like, I feel more comfortable heel side than toe side. No, no, I always felt more toe side. Yeah, yeah, more toe side. Yeah. Sometimes I do. I don't know. I didn't really go that fast this time, so I can't say this season, but I could get off the lift, no problems. That was the first season I've ever got on the lift, rode straight off. Smooth sailing. Yeah. <laughs> Nice. I was in San Diego this year. It was good. It was really hot. Really? It was like 90 degrees on Thanksgiving. <laughs> Sounds awesome. No, it was awful. <laughs> <laughs> it was like the worst thing ever because being like from Maryland, you know, like it's freaking cold on Thanksgiving. So yeah. you're expecting to wear like jeans and boots and like sweaters and a scarf and yeah. possibly a parka. <laughs> and instead I was wearing like shorts and a tank top. <laughs> How funny. It was really weird. Was it cool spending time with your brother though? Yeah, he was... He's interesting. <laughs> I was more excited to spend time with his dog, honestly. <laughs> like, his dog's so cool. So, that was great. But they took him to the vet today, and now he has, like, a scratch on his eye. Oh, so no. he's looking at the camera, and he's like, this. <laughs> the camera. <laughs> yeah, but it's okay. His you, fiance seems really cool, though. Yeah, she's really nice. She's like, um... The other day we were sitting there, and he's like, she's going to be 25, because he's only 23. <laughs> so, yeah, but she's really nice. She actually is, like... She just got an actual job, cool. not like a temporary job. Good for her. But she's super, super nice, and she is like, I don't know, trying to, you know, Colton's away all the time mm -hmm. because of his job, so she's just like trying to figure out how to live by herself oh. a thousand miles away from where she grew up. <laughs> so it's, it's challenging, I think, for her, but I mean, I think she's getting better at it. That's really cool. So, yeah. You went to Durango, right? Yeah, I went to Durango. But then, okay, so you're from Farmington. Yeah. So then, did you do Thanksgiving in Farmington and then go to Durango? Okay. Yeah, because it's only like 45 minutes away, so I had Thanksgiving at home with my mom. And then we saw my grandma in the evening. Okay. And my cousin just had a baby a couple months ago, so we got to play with the baby. How old is the baby? He's like eight months old. Mm. <laughs> is it adorable? It's super cute. Is it a boy or a girl? It's a boy. His name is Matthias. Matthias? Yeah. What? What's his <laughs> nickname? I don't know. Sometimes my mom calls him math, but I really don't math? like that. I hate math. Yeah, I do math too. is awful. I do math. I can't do math. Ew, so, that would suck. Yeah, but it was cool to just like play with him. And babies just change a lot. I know. I feel like it's so weird. Like, okay, I used to nanny for a kid, mm -hmm. and I never really realized how small children actually are. You know, like you have to be around them every day to yes. be like, whoa, you're a very small human. Like, it's, they're just very tiny. And, like, yeah. their hands, what gets me is their hands, because their hands are, like... <laughs> tiny little fingers. Yeah, they're so small. So then you don't, <laughs> you don't realize, like, oh, my gosh, I'm dealing with an actual child right now until yeah. you, like, spend a lot of time with them. I feel like you can't just babysit and be like, oh, humans are so small. Like, you have to be around yeah. that human all day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Which is awesome. It was cool. I haven't always liked babies, but when it comes from someone I actually care about, yeah, it's really cool. Makes sense. As you can see, the females were more focused on discussing relationships and experiences, whereas the males were more focused on discussing their personal accomplishments and exchanging information. The males very clearly chose to discuss only one topic, while the females discussed multiple topics as their conversation flowed. For example, the males discuss different snowboarding areas, strategies that each of them use to snowboard, and their opinions on technique and gear. They use this information to gain knowledge and perspective from one another. One example of the males discussing themselves can be found towards the end of the clip when male one states that now that he's better at snowboarding, he feels more comfortable using a specific technique that male two mentioned. Male two then responded claiming that he didn't really go that fast on his last trip, so it's hard to say how this season will be for him. This is a clear comparison of each male's strengths, which is something that we were really looking out for in these recordings. The females discussed their Thanksgiving break, their families, and babies. They then used that information to speak more personally and build their relationship. 
One example of the females using communication to create and maintain relationships occurs in the beginning of the clip, when they're discussing their Thanksgiving breaks. Female 1 talks about her brother and his dog, then female 2 responds and asks about his fiance. This is a clear delve into female 1's personal life, which is exactly what we were hoping to find in these recordings. We hope that the information that you've gathered from this video can help you to better understand the ways that males and females communicate and improve your future interactions with both the same and the opposite gender. It is important to understand that in communication, the individuals that we communicate with come from different backgrounds and have different experiences. This means that they may communicate differently from how you might. This is a key factor in both opposite and same gender communicative interactions. This information is valuable when applied to real life communication situations. This has been our perspective on Deborah Tannen's theory of gender lifestyles. We hope you enjoyed.